Okay, let's just get this out of the way. Yeah, that's to be expected with this game, but what makes Breath of the Wild so special to me? Well, first of all, that would have to be... Breath of the Wild asks many questions about open world design. Like, why should the story have to stop with the direction that I choose to travel? Why should there only be one interesting thing in this one location when the journey there is half the adventure? And Breath of the Wild answers all those questions with how they design the game. So why do my weapons break? Well, they break so that you have to go out and find a new one. Why is my map not fully filled in when I scan an area? Well, because the mystery of what's actually out there is stronger than a text box telling you what is. When you compare Breath of the Wild to different open world games like Grand Theft Auto, the ways that they go about structuring their missions are very similar but also just completely different. Yes, they both have their missions spread across the map, but in Grand Theft Auto, you have to beat a certain amount of them to be able to progress the story. Like, if you don't go to this specific mission and watch Trevor take a ship behind this garbage can, the story will not progress. Sweet Jesus. What the hell are you doing? Then you look at something like Breath of the Wild. You can beat the game one hour into it if you want to. And that's what this whole game is built around. What do you want? Do you want to climb up to the top of that mountain? Sure, and there will be something up there for you. Do you want to go to that island? Sure, you can. But how will you get there? Will you use a boat? Ice blocks? Will you glide there? Or will you do this dumb thing? And the creators of this game had that one idea of what the player would want to do from the very beginning. So the puzzle solving in this game begins the moment the player starts to think about where they want to go, how they will get there, and what they will do when they arrive. Breath of the Wild wants no strings tying it to one idea, no set path to its story. And for the story being so freeform, I still found it pretty solid, like the mountains that you will be climbing. And you'll be doing a lot of climbing in this game, which I initially thought, oh geez, what, what, it's just going to be just thrown in, tacked on like all these other games. But no, it's more than a gimmick. It's an actual gameplay mechanic. It's something that you actually have to manage with your stamina bar. It will turn a simple climb into one that you're unsure of. And you need to take into account other things like weather because when it rains, you can't climb. Or do you want to switch your gear to one that has a climbing buff so you can climb up mountains faster? And you also have the different biomes that you need to take into account as well. Like if you're in a snowy one, if you put on this other gear set, it'll make it so you're colder so you have to figure out something else. Like you can put a, a weapon of fire on your back to make it so you're warm enough to be able to climb. And although each climb is different, the one thing that is the same between all of them is the view that you'll see once you reach the top. Hyrule always rewarded my curiosity with a new shrine, a new item, or coracle seed. But for me, the biggest reward of all is just the view of Hyrule. It's so picturesque to me. Everything is just like a photo that I do not want to forget. When the sun is rising over Hyrule as you're climbing a mountain, I often find myself stopping just a few minutes to enjoy the views. Before I continue, to the next scenic area and the next enemy that I'll be engaging in. I found the combat of Breath of the Wild to be as freeform and varied as the exploration of this vast world. The amount of tools and choices that you're given from each combat situation to another is almost overwhelming. You can choose to go in stealthfully, loud, from a distance, up close. You can use a box as a weapon. You can use a rock as a weapon. Whenever you think of an idea or a way to engage something, it never hurts to try it. Because most of the time, Nintendo always says yes. It says yes to your creativity and yes to your new ideas. Like, for instance, one of my favorite ways to fight these goblin guys is to crowd them into a group, run away and take out my fire sword and start some grass on fire. And then when you start grass on fire, it creates an updraft. So I jump into it, take out my glider and fly up in the air. Then once I'm in the air, I go into bullet time by pulling out my bow and arrow. Then I switch to explosive arrows and just shoot a flurry of them into the enemies. Then you have the sword and shield play that is just so complex. You have the shield parrying, blocking, you have the dodge mechanic, and you also have the flurry mechanic. 
And you can also use your stasis mode to freeze enemies in place. With all these tools at your hands, it makes so all situations feel like they're winnable and fair. Except when you're fighting this piece of shit. This thing is fast. Watch yourself. <laughs> fast? Fast my ass! There's no way I could have reacted to that. Although that boss fight was difficult, it made the victory that much more satisfying when I finally got that cutscene and a new power-up. That's what I really enjoyed about the Divine Beasts. Yes, you've lost the dungeon system from the previous Zelda games, but instead you get these creatures that are just straight out of Shadow of the Colossus. Then you have the final thing that ties the exploration and the combat together, that being the fantastic and beautiful. I distinctly remember my journey across Hyrule to the Kriko village as one filled with mystery and just a strange feeling to it. I just remember walking down this valley and having all these different creatures surrounding me but never having any menace to them. All I heard was them and me in this path. And as I entered the village, the sounds of the game meshed with the sound of the village and it just kind of stuck with me. For every Nintendo release, they are always able to capture the essence of a video game with its soundtrack. And Breath of the Wild is no different. The essence of Breath of the Wild's soundtrack to me is hope. The hope that although the odds are stacked against you, although you guys have already lost once and it's been 100 years since Hyrule has fallen to Calamity Ganon, the one thing that is always there beside you is the music that gives you hope. Nintendo has not just mastered music, they have mastered silence. Never before have I noticed myself stopping so often just to listen to the sounds of a game. The sound of the grass in the breeze. Now yes, the audio is very important to what makes this game so special. But that's just one piece that makes up a part. These pieces are very good, but together it makes a game that is completely unforgettable. The exploration, the combat, the audio, they all come together to make something so special. Do you know why Link is always portrayed as a silent protagonist? Well, to put it simply, it's so you can hear this bomb ass soundtrack. Thank you.